Storms moving through the Ohio and Mississippi River valleys this afternoon. And if you look up there in the northeastern U.S., some filaments of wildfire smoke coming through New England. A quick look at our climate indicators, the Pacific North American Oscillation, dropping a little bit as we break down that Canadian ridge, and the Arctic Oscillation picking up as the flow strengthens. And especially as we head into next week, we're going to see that jet stream really pick up across western Canada and the Gulf of Alaska. A look at our evening sky out there to the west just after sunset, Mercury is reaching its greatest elongation tomorrow. And what that means is the angle between Mercury and the Sun, which is below the horizon here, is at its greatest, and that means excellent viewing conditions. So if you want to get a look at Mercury, now is the time. And you will find Mars just above it. However, depending on where you are, the evening sky may be affected by some of that wildfire smoke, especially in the north central and northeastern U.S. And the Perseid meteor shower will be on the 12th and 13th, coming up here in a few days. And since there's a new moon, there will be great viewing conditions for that as well. Here's a look at our weather chart this afternoon. It is starting to get a little bit more active. That's marking a very slight shift in the pattern. We've got one front across the southern states from the Carolinas to Colorado and Utah and a second front up to the north. Each of those are triggering thunderstorms. Also we've got warm weather continuing in Texas, some awful heat in that part of the country and some of that heat also affecting Florida as well. Heat indexes up to 115 in some parts of the state. In the northeast, you can see that wildfire smoke filtering across the northeastern U.S. Some storms back into Pennsylvania. The southeastern region underneath a tropical air mass. High temperatures, high humidities. And then we reached the dry line right around Wichita Falls, which got up to 112 today. Let's take a look at the current temperatures. So, yeah, we're still looking at 112 at Wichita Falls. 104 at DFW at this time, 105 at Waco, and off the bottom of the screen, San Antonio is at 104. There are excessive heat warnings, pretty much a permanent feature in Texas and Louisiana this summer. Pretty much everywhere you look, from San Angelo to Jackson, Mississippi, from Dallas, Wichita Falls, down to Houston, that's all under that excessive heat warning. However, to the north, tornado watches, one up there in Oklahoma, Arkansas, and another one being considered for eastern Arkansas. This is going to be an active area this evening, especially around Memphis and northern Mississippi, western Tennessee, and northeastern Arkansas as well. Most of northern Arizona under significant showers and storms, especially along a line from Seligman to Flagstaff, Sedona, Sholo and Alpine, spotty flood advisories in that area, and further out west we've got the remnants of Tropical Storm Eugene off the southwestern California coast. Let's take a look out west. There's our Pacific High receding a little bit, pressures down to 1020 millibars, and up north some very warm air infiltrating northern Alaska, that region under easterly flow, and you can see just East of the Brooks Range, temperatures up to the 70s. And we've got 66 there at Sachs Harbor on Banks Island. And wildfire smoke, definitely some unusual weather in the southwestern Arctic there. Thunderstorms moved through the Huntsville area this afternoon, moving into far northeastern Alabama and more cells further to the southwest. Don't see any impressive cells on any of this, although the tail end storms have a little bit more access to moisture. Up to the north, the air is pretty much underneath the stratiform precip area. Numerous showers and storms all the way from Indianapolis to Champaign, back towards Springfield, and Springfield, Illinois, is under a flash flood warning. There's what all this looks like from above. We can see the tropical air mass, the more vertical cumulus, 
lots of solar heating right through this region. Of course, we hit the convection as we go north. Some of this looks pretty elevated. And then further north, the air looks a little bit more overturned. We get into those transverse stratocumulus bands, more of a stable air mass. And of course, further up north, we've got the other area of storms in Illinois and Indiana. We can see that much of this is north of the warm front. That's it right there from about Joplin to Little Rock and towards Columbus, Mississippi. Most of that convection is just north of that warm front. And we've got the surface low right there around Joplin. And there's how SPC has that warned. The warm front pretty much like that, the enhanced risk right along that warm front. And the main threat for tornadoes is in the Ozarks and the Boston Mountains. There is a lot of uncertainty just how this is going to evolve. The high resolution rapid refresh going for a cluster right there around Springfield, Missouri, and moving southeast into the Arkansas, Missouri border area this evening. Some of those could be supercells, and then you can see it grow upscale into an MCS, affecting everywhere from Clinton, Harrison, eastward towards Memphis, right around 11, 12 midnight, and then propagating east-southeast into the Memphis and northern Mississippi region. At this time, we do have some cells going up along Interstate 44 from Springfield towards Joplin and out towards Bartlesville. So we're going to be keeping an eye on that over the next few hours as it moves into northern Arkansas and southern Missouri. And out there in Arizona and New Mexico, numerous cells, all the way from Truth or Consequences up towards Flagstaff and Seligman. Let's take a look at that radar. Yeah, it's a bit unusual to see this much activity in northern Arizona, but yeah, numerous cells all along Interstate 40, up towards the Painted Desert and down towards the Mogollon Rim. And a little outflow boundary pushing southwest around Meteor Crater. We have had some hurricane problems close to Hawaii. Hurricane Dora, Category 4 storm, making its way towards the west-northwest. It has laid down this track of winds. You can see that's well south of Hawaii. The latitude on that storm right around 12 north, Hawaii at 20 north. So in terms of miles, 20 minus 12, that's 8 degrees so you're looking at 480 miles from Hawaii for that hurricane. And that storm does have a very wide wind radius, so it's very fortunate that it kept its distance. But this is yesterday evening. You can see very strong winds across the islands. Honolulu gusting to 38 knots there. That's about 42, 43 miles an hour. And those winds persisted overnight. And bringing that up to the current time, winds are still up near 25 knots at Honolulu and near 30 knots at Kahului. And unfortunately, those winds have created wildfires. There's numerous red flag advisories, and this is certainly bad news. There have been evacuations, and reportedly some people have been driven into the ocean. And so the Coast Guard has been involved in rescue operations. The Atlantic, though, appears to be rather quiet. Here's the tropical weather picture. This is showing the wind flow at the surface, and the colors are the vorticity at the surface. So where they're tight and bunched up like that, that indicates a surface disturbance. Now, there are linear disturbances along here. That's the intertropical convergence zone. We're also seeing artifacts with the convergence along the South American coastline. That's kind of a permanent feature. But some of that is part of the intertropical convergence zone, like what you see right there. So that kind of connects into this. So what we're looking for, for tropical cyclone activity, we want to see a very tight core, kind of like what we see right there, and see it, that migrating towards the west. So does that happen? Yeah, there's one disturbance right there for Friday. And there is a closed circulation with that. So we're probably going to see that pop up in the National Hurricane Center bulletins. Don't know if that's going to have much effect. That's it around Tuesday next week, but not quite coming together. So possibly there's too much upper-level shear. Nothing 
for the midweek period, here's a little disturbance for Saturday the 19th. That's getting really far out there. But it still looks rather quiet into the 15th and 20th. And even the Caribbean, the Gulf of Mexico, and the Western Atlantic looking pretty quiet. And up to the north, yeah, that's a little polar front. You can actually pick that up on that relative vorticity chart that we're showing. A big change coming up over the next 5 to 10 days. This is the 250 millibar flow. This is near the top of the troposphere, up at about 34,000 feet. And what we see here is light greens, medium greens. That's uh, is that showing, yeah, that's about 60 to 80 knots of flow. And where we start picking up the oranges, that's getting into 100 to 120 knots. And there's a little bit of that in the Gulf of Alaska. And we see the flow is a little bit wavy. So medium to high amplitude patterns for this time of year. But it is progressive. I don't really see much blocking going on. And what we see going into next week, there's Sunday, there's Monday. There's significant strengthening out there in the Gulf of Alaska, western Canada. Starting to pick up those 110 to 120 knot flows. And we do hang on to some ridging through the central part of the country, so it will remain hot. And looks like also maybe some hot weather in the northwest. That's ridging right there. But cool weather in the northeast, some troughing. And going into Tuesday and Wednesday, yep, fast flow coming through western Canada, strong trough moving into the north central U.S., so that may start getting us into a kind of a spring-like pattern in that part of the country. Maybe severe weather chances going up around midweek in the North Central and Great Lakes area. And, yeah, that flow pretty much continues. Very deep trough in Central Canada. This may drive some polar air into parts of the North Central U.S. and Northeast. Not sure how far that's going to come south, but that could get us into a bit of a northwesterly flow pattern. Although not seeing much flow in the central U.S., so it is kind of questionable how far south the effects will be. But looking at the 2PVU chart, this is near the, uh, this is actually at the tropopause, way up there in the atmosphere. This, the coloring, this indicates how high the tropopause is, so 100 millibars, that's orange, that's right around there. And that's going to be near 50,000, 52,000. And you can see this big subtropical high covering the southern states into Texas. This is where we're at right now. And you're going to see kind of a change. We have one little pulse building across Texas going into the weekend. Unfortunately, I don't have the date at the bottom right, but I can kind of guide you along. This is going to be around the weekend. However, getting into next week, we see that subtropical ridge start breaking down a little bit. One strong trough coming into California. And towards the end of the period, near the 18th and 19th, looks like that subtropical high really backs off into Mexico and Baja California. And we start opening up some strong westerly flow. So there's a chance we may see the light at the end of the tunnel here with a heat wave although we still probably will be hanging on to 90s. The 100s, those may be over. We'll have to see about that. One last look at the radar. Storms continue developing around Branson, back towards Joplin and Bartlesville. And storms have developed as well, west of Gainesville, Texas, along the Red River. 107 over 60, I guess that's enough to get those storms going. One strong storm as we record this, west of Marietta, Oklahoma, with the temperature dew point spread being about 40 degrees. These are certainly high-based, and with that, a risk of wind damage. Get that very strong evaporational cooling, and you can easily get 50 to 60 mile an hour gusts in these downdrafts. There's a quick check of the moisture the colors indicating the dew points. Orange is 60s dew points. Purple is 70s dew points. That's the muggiest air. And you can see the surface wind flow superimposed here. So Arizona getting some of those 60s dew points and quite a bit of 60s dew points up into the Midwest. So over the next few days, here's how things are going to evolve. Not a whole lot of change. Still hanging on to a frontal boundary through the eastern U.S. 
and continued southerly flow through Texas, and we see 80s dew points right along the Texas coast. We start getting into some changes around Saturday. There's a strong surface front right there. Northwesterly flow coming into Illinois and Indiana. A little bit of drying back behind that. Very lackluster. And then we start getting return flow once again. A couple of cyclones up there in the Kansas City area around Monday. And finally, around Tuesday or Wednesday, a good push of dry air southward. 50s dew points coming south. And some of that even reaches into Texas as well. Then going into the midweek and late week period, this is when we get into some major changes up in the north central U.S. There's a push of very strong Canadian air. Northwest winds at 15 knots up there in the Dakotas. And doesn't make much headway south. Here comes another pulse around Friday of next week. And that's about as far as we can get with that prognosis. Looks like some very stout return flow in advance of that. Strong dynamics there in the Great Lakes. And, of course, that could set the stage for some severe weather at some point. And we're talking around the middle or end of next week. So if you live in that area around Chicago, Indianapolis, pay close attention to the forecasts over the next several days. And that's all for this edition of Forecast Lab. I do want to thank everybody who supports via Patreon. I consider that like each one of you buying me a coffee as I work through the program. And it is a morale boost and keeps me focused on investing in this program. We'll be back once again for another edition on Friday. And I'll leave you with some footage here. This is slightly sped up. But this is a storm that moved through East Texas back on June 28th of 2021. So enjoy that, and we'll see you back here in a couple days. Take care. Bye-bye.